Okay, so anyone who's um, left their car for an extended period in an airport and come back um, to discover that the battery's flat will know that when cars are left undriven, um, the electronic uh, memories and alarms and those type of things will deplete a car's battery. Um, and so given the current travel restrictions, um, we're just going to make a quick video um, to highlight a few of the ways that you can avoid your battery becoming um, depleted so the car is ready to drive should you need it um, and also avoid um, irreparable damage to your battery by it becoming completely uh, depleted. First thing to say, um, as with all things, do refer to the specific instructions given in your own car's um, um, manual. Um, so a paper version of that should be available or you should find this online and if you're using any battery charging equipment um, then relate that um, again to the advice given for the specific type of charger you are using. First thing to do um, is to identify where your battery is in the engine bay um, and quite often as you can see here this is a Volkswagen engine so this would be quite common common setup on a lot of modern um, Volkswagens, so Volkswagens, Audis, Skodas, that type of thing would have a setup not dissimilar to this where the battery is concealed um, in a plastic case to protect it from the heat of the engine. So as you can see here we've got a picture of the battery there um, and an illustration um, and, an, and some instruction to push here. So if we just push there and remove the cover that will expose the battery. What you'll probably notice is that I'm wearing um, some protective gloves. I'm also wearing um, some safety goggles. Um, batteries contain sulfuric acid, very strong and unpleasant acid. You certainly don't want it on your hands um, and has the potential to explode with hydrogen gases. So you need uh, to follow all the instructions, all the, ins all the safety instructions as indicated in the manual. Um, if your car is of an older type, um, a simple technique that is, will be recommended in your car's manual is simply to dis disconnect the negative lead from the battery and that um, prevents any drain on the battery. So the first thing to do is to um, unlock your car normally and open a door. Then leave the car for a couple of minutes just to let all the um, ECUs and monitors settle down. Then you're in a position where you can simply disconnect the negative lead. So the first thing to do is to identify which is the negative lead. If you look on this battery, there's a small positive sign. And it's not on this, uh, this particular car, but often you'll have a red marking. But you've got a positive or a red marking. And on the other side, we have a minus or a negative um, marking. Um, and the lead is typically black. That's the one you want to remove. So just to illustrate that, we get a spanner. Very careful not to touch the spanner onto any metal parts of the, the car. We simply loosen that. And then gently remove the negative lead. Um, as you can see, it's on, it will just spring back naturally, so you do need to tuck it out of the way. Um, maybe tie it out of the way with a bit of string so it can't just pop back and then reconnect with the battery. Um, but doing that will prevent the battery discharging any further. And then when you're ready to drive the car again, um, you simply reapply that and then tighten the nuts firmly. Obviously, once the battery has been disconnected, you have no central locking. Um, so you then have to get into the car um, and lock the car manually, pushing the uh, locking mechanisms down and take guidance from your own car's manual on how to do that. Um, but also be aware, obviously, things like your alarm and security features won't then be working, but your battery won't be depleting. Okay, so the second option you have available um, if you have access to a trickle charger is to put your battery on a um, maintenance or trickle charge which will just keep it topped up um, while the car isn't being driven um, and then it's ready to go and it also prevents it um, discharging and sulfating and getting to the point where you can't um, then save the battery so it will damage the battery um, so by keeping it topped up fully charged has two benefits, one it keeps the car ready to go when you, you need it most um, and it also 
um, avoids ruining your battery. Just um, a key thing to point out here, uh, battery technology has changed quite significantly in recent years. So particularly if you have a stop-start uh, car, um, you are likely to have um, an EFB battery um, or an AGM battery. So that's an enhanced flooded battery or absorbent glass mat battery. Both of these technologies require a different charging cycle. Um, so if in these uh, challenging times you're rummaging around in the back of your, uh, your garage or your shed to find your old battery charger, um, that may be inappropriate for this new type of battery technology. So really important, as we've said before, to follow the instructions um, given in your car's manual um, and also uh, the car uh, charger that you're using. So without doing any brand plugs, um, this is a SeaTech brand charger. Um, it's one of the leading manufacturers. Typically it would be the brand used um, by car manufacturers, uh, the likes of Porsche, BMW, um, Aston Martin, if they're going to put a charger, supply a charger with their cars, SeaTech would be the brand um, they supply. Um, it has an awful lot of features that make it very simple to operate um, and make it very safe to operate. Um, typically the best of anything, you're going to pay a little bit more for a SeaTech model. There are cheaper alternatives available, um, but you must follow their instructions, particularly the safety instructions, very carefully. Okay, so we'll just have a quick look at how we fit this. Um, as I say, we're working at the moment on a Volkswagen engine. Um, so, as we've said previously, first thing to do is identify where the battery is um, located and then um, gain access to that by removing the plastic cover. <coughs> and then the first thing and the most important thing to do, uh, we've got a couple of crocodile clips. So, red is for positive and black is for negative so the first thing to do on the battery is to identify which is the positive um, often it will be identified by a red cable um, and that is in fact the case on this car but it's a long way down there so it's hard to see but the most important thing you're looking for is the positive sign to confirm that is your uh, positive terminal and then you can see the black one over here has got a negative marking so we're looking to connect the crocodile clip the red crocodile clip with a positive on it to that positive terminal. Now, quite often you'll see on videos people will connect um, the negative to the uh, negative terminal. There is a very slight risk of um, creating a spark and creating an explosion with hydrogen gas. Um, so the, all the advice from the manufacturers um, is to connect not to the negative terminal, but to another metal part of the bodywork. So on this car, um, this isn't, it mustn't have paint on it, so this is a non-exposed area, this is actually an earthing point. So you just clip the connector onto that earthing point. That's good contact there. Okay, having done that, the next thing we need to do is, um, another important thing is not to place the charger itself in the charging unit, not to leave that on the battery. Um, and this is where it can become difficult in reality. Um, if you can't do it in a garage environment, you're doing this right on your driveway um, or even on the road, you're then balancing the, the security, people running off with your charger and this type of thing um, with safety aspects. But generally, you don't want to be sitting anywhere near the battery. If a spark does occur, it can cause an explosion. So we're looking to route the cable gently out of the engine bay. And then we're going to place the charger here, then on the floor. And then carefully, we're going to shut the bonnet. Really important just to check that the clips, bearing in mind the bonnet's going to be coming down here, so check the clips are below any level where it's going to get caught by the bonnet. Generally bring that down and then try and find an area where you can latch the bonnet without it actually pinching the cable. So we then come down to the floor and we're looking at the charger here. All we have to do now is plug the charger in to an extension lead, which I'm doing now. And you'll see immediately we get a sequence of lights. And on this CTEC uh, charger, it's fully automated, so it's just going through the phases. 
um, so the sulfation phase, then it's in a charging phase, um, the charging um, input is then reduced until we get to a full battery situation where this light will turn green. <laughs> so once that's happened, we can just leave um, the charger connected to its extension need. It draws very little current from the mains um, and you can just leave it charging and then your car will be ready um, when you need it and the battery will be fully charged and in good condition. Clearly we need to protect this charging unit um, from rain. So some sort of plastic container, plastic bag, put it well under the car. And similarly with your extension lead, push that well under um, so it's protected from any rain. When the time comes um, and you want to use your car again, um, all you need to do is simply unplug from the mains. You'll see the lights go off and then you unclip the trickle charger um, as, uh, as a reverse of the process before. Okay, so the other thing is if you get to a situation where you did need to change your battery, remove your battery, um, it's a relatively simple process again if you follow um, the instructions given in your car manual, but also it's crucial that you follow any safety instructions. So if you're not sure, don't do this. Um, most important thing, firstly, is the sequence in which you remove um, the connecting leads. So again, we identify the positive and the negative. And it's very important that we remove the negative lead first to avoid any shorting out. If I start working with my metal spanner on the lead first, and inadvertently touch that across to a metal component on the car, I can create a spark and an explosion. Um, whereas if I dis disconnect the negative lead first, um, we remove that risk. So you simply loosen off this nut as we've done previously and lift that um, terminal off, push it out of the way. Then you can work safely to remove the positive terminal. You'll then have to identify how the battery is secured, physically secured and release that. Um, and then most batteries, as this one does, will have a handle, lifting handle. Be aware, batteries are, particularly larger ones like this, are heavy, so you need to be physically strong enough to do that or get help from somebody who is. Um, and again, be aware, this is a plastic tub of sulfuric acid, so the last thing you want to do is drop that and have that split. So make sure you, sure you are physically um, strong enough to do that or get help, professional help, if you are unsure. Um, but you would then physically lift that out of the car, keeping the new battery upright again to avoid any, bat, um, any acid leaking out. You then reinsert that, bolt it securely, um, and then connect in a reverse order. You connect the positive first, so that if you do touch anything with your metal spanner, there's no chance of it sparking. And then you finally uh, reconnect the negative terminal. Other thing just to point out here, there are two little vent holes. Um, if these, this battery's been delivered to you, these vents will have probably a little red or some little plug in it. Transit plugs, essentially important. You remove those plugs um, to allow hydrogen gas to vent from the battery. If you don't do that, gas will build up and you're effectively um, creating a sulfuric acid bomb. So make sure you follow all manufacturer's safety instructions. So this is the battery. Forward battery, um, but we do need to remove that plastic cover um, to gain access to the terminal. So a little squeeze with the thumb, and then this just lifts up to expose the positive terminal. And at which point we are carefully connecting the red crocodile clip to the positive. Okay, so we've had a look at a Ford engine bay and um, a Volkswagen. This is now um, a Nissan. This is my Nissan. Um, I don't know if you can see with the lighting here, but on this little plastic cover here, um, again, we've got uh, the word battery written on there. It's a little plastic tongue that you lift out to expose the battery. Um, again, we've got the date it was fitted. Um, and that's actually, if you're looking to get a new battery, this, this company without doing any company plugs, um, but this is an online retailer that will deliver batteries to your door. Um, so they're probably set up and ideally suited for this situation. Though Euro car parts, Halfords, all of these people will obviously get you a, a replacement battery where you need it. Um, similarly, as with the Ford, the, uh, this one has a protective case over the uh, positive terminal. So you just need to lift that up 
to then gain access to where you need to clip your red crocodile clip. 